This program should be viewed along with the course handbook and to support the instructor's lessons and coaching. This video reinforces material and procedures presented in the classroom. It is not intended to stand alone. The improper use of firearms may result in serious injury. The material presented in this video is intended to demonstrate the operation of firearms in accordance with safe handling techniques and an awareness of manufacturer's specifications and safety features. The Department of Justice, Justice Canada, makes no warranties whatsoever, either express or implied, oral or written, in fact or by operation of law or otherwise, regarding the safety of any firearm or the use of any safety mechanism shown in the video. Individuals should use their firearms in accordance with manufacturer's specifications and contact individual manufacturers as each model features different safety mechanisms and some of the techniques demonstrated might not be appropriate for certain firearms. Ultimately, responsibility for firearm safety rests with the individual. The following presentation will focus on firearm safety. It will emphasize a proper and safe way in which to store, display, transport, handle, and discharge firearms. To begin our instruction of firearm safety, you must understand that rules have to be observed whenever you come in contact with firearms. The vital four acts are a set of rules that relate to the safe and proper way to use firearms. These four acts must be obeyed at all times and are fundamental to your safety and the safety of those around you. Firearm safety is not negotiable. Remember that these rules must be followed in this order. A. Assume every firearm is loaded. C. Control the muzzle direction at all times. T. The trigger finger must be kept off the trigger and out of the trigger guard. S. See that the firearm is unloaded. Prove it's safe. This introduces another important principle of firearm use, proving a firearm unloaded or proving it safe. The steps that are used to unload a firearm combine to spell the word prove. P. Point the firearm in the safest available direction. R. Remove all cartridges. O. Observe the chamber. V. Verify the feeding path. E. Examine the bore. Point, remove, observe, verify, and examine. Each step in that order contributes to prove a firearm safe. In the interest of safety, many procedures shown in this video meet or exceed legal requirements and go beyond basic firearm safety. These procedures are used by experienced shooters. To determine the specific legal requirements for firearm safety in your province or territory, consult your provincial or territorial authorities. This video was made under controlled conditions with the utmost safety. 
All loading of live ammunition and shooting of firearms took place at a firing range. Introduction to Firearms This firearm is a muzzle loader. The components used in a percussion cap muzzle loader are shot or a ball, a wad or patch, black powder, and a percussion cap. This studio simulation is presented for instructional purposes only. The following procedure should only be done where the firearm may be safely and legally discharged. If this was not a simulation and the firearm was to be loaded, a percussion cap would be fired to eliminate any oils that may be present in the barrel prior to using powder. Only the required amount of powder will be poured into the barrel. Use a volumetric measure to confirm the correct amount. Black powder must always be used with caution. Never pour black powder directly from the original manufacturer's container or powder horn into the barrel. Doing so could result in detonating the entire container of powder should burning embers remain present at the base of the bore from a previous discharge. Always use a volumetric measure as shown in this exercise. A lubricated patch and ball are pushed into the barrel first with a short push rod to start it then a ramrod to properly seat the ball and patch at the bottom of the barrel. To fire the charge, pulling the trigger causes the hammer to drop, striking the percussion cap and creating a flame in the chamber, which ignites the powder charge. This explosive black powder was the first type of gunpowder. It is still used today in shooting sports that use firearms or reproductions of firearms dating from an earlier time. The percussion cap was not put in place because it would be an unsafe practice in this simulated exercise. The explosion of black powder creates gases that force the projectile out of the barrel. Igniting this explosive black powder, as well as other demonstrations in this video, are performed by experts in controlled situations. They should not be attempted under any other circumstances. Smokeless powder is used in most modern ammunition. Unlike explosive black powder, modern smokeless powder is classified as a solid propellant. It burns rather than explodes and is therefore much safer to handle. Never interchange smokeless powder and black powder. Use them only in firearms intended for their use. Firearm Types There are three common types of firearms. Shotguns, rifles, and handguns. The basic types of actions used in these firearms are the hinge or break action, the bolt action, the lever action the pump action the semi-automatic action also found in handguns and the revolving action this is most common in handguns but may be found on some rifles Operating firearm actions. This is a break or hinge action shotgun. Break or hinge action shotguns have single or multiple barrels. They do not have magazines in which additional ammunition may be placed. Remember to wear safety glasses whenever loading and discharging firearms. There are several key components which make up a firearm. The barrel. The muzzle the forestock, 
the trigger guard, the trigger, the hammer, the action, the extractor and ejector. To prove a break or hinge action shotgun safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. Remove all cartridges. Observe the chamber. Verify the feeding path. Examine the bore. This simple firearm has a built-in safety device, a transfer bar safety system. When the hammer is fully forward, the safety is on. When the action is closed and the hammer is pulled back in the cocked position, the shotgun can fire. To lower the hammer into the safety on position, hold the hammer back firmly. It is necessary on this firearm to pull the trigger while gently lowering the hammer with the thumb. Slowly move the hammer forward into the safety on position, removing your finger from the trigger and out of the trigger guard once the hammer starts moving forward. Modern firearms typically have a data stamp on the barrel or the receiver, age or caliber, length after discharge, powder charge, and shot size. Additional information may also be identified. In this case, for example, velocity indicates the speed of the shot in feet per second. Use only ammunition which is matched for your particular firearm. Any firearm should only be loaded where the firearm may be safely and legally discharged, and only immediately before intending to use it. Observing the vital four acts and going through the proved procedure is fundamental to ensuring that the firearm can be safely loaded. Remember, prove it's safe. Use the appropriate ammunition. Make sure that nothing comes in contact with the trigger while loading. With the action open, load the firearm by putting the shell in the chamber. Firmly close the action. When ready to fire, move the safety to the off position. It is now ready to be discharged. Be sure of your target and beyond. This shotgun was loaded and discharged at an indoor firing range under strictly controlled conditions. The discharge of shotguns at any indoor range is not recommended. It was performed here to illustrate correct loading procedure and to provide an example of the shot spread and pattern. This is a bolt action rifle. A bolt-action rifle has a single barrel and may or may not have a magazine. To prove the bolt-action rifle safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. With the safety on, remove all cartridges. This bolt-action rifle is equipped with a detachable magazine. Pushing the magazine release allows the magazine to be removed. With the bolt-action open, observe the chamber for ammunition. Verify that the feeding path is empty. Examine the bore. Even with the firearm completely unloaded, muzzle control and correct finger placement are an essential practice in firearm safety. The action is operated with the bolt's handle, shown here closing the action. The three-way safety on this particular rifle is a wing type. The forward position is safety off, ready to fire and the rear position is safety on. Now the bolt cannot be moved. In the middle position the firearm cannot be fired but the bolt can be removed from the action. The data stamp on this rifle shows that the correct ammunition is a 22 long rifle cartridge. These are rimfire cartridges. Unlike center fire cartridges, data information is not contained on the head stamp. To match the correct ammunition to this firearm, refer to the information printed on the ammunition box.
This is a lever action rifle. A lever action rifle has a single barrel. Most, such as this example, have tubular magazines and can shoot several times between reloading. To prove the lever action rifle safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. With the safety on, remove all ammunition by cycling the action several times. Observe the chamber to check that no cartridge remains in it. Verify that the feeding path, including the tubular magazine, is clear. Examine the bore. The bore light is placed in the chamber to help check that no obstructions are present in the bore. If the barrel is clear, light will pass through. Notice the rifling in this particular firearm. The bore light also serves as a blocking device, prohibiting the action from closing. This particular lever action firearm has three safeties, the cross bolt, half cock, and the trigger block. First, put on the cross bolt safety. Then place the hammer in the half cock or safety on position. To do so, firmly hold the hammer with your weak hand thumb and pull the trigger. As the hammer moves slowly forward, remove your finger from the trigger. It should stop in the half cock position. If the hammer should slip from under your thumb, the firearm will not fire. The cross bolt safety prevents the hammer from hitting the firing pin. This firearm also has a trigger block and will only fire when the lever depresses it. The data stamp on the barrel indicates the ammunition used by this rifle. In this particular example, either 357 Magnum or 38 Special can be used. In this firearm, the longer 357 Magnum chamber also accepts the shorter 38 Special cartridge. Note, however, that a firearm with 38 Special chamber cannot safely accept the longer 357 Magnum cartridge. Correct information about this firearm's ammunition can be found on the ammunition box. To match the correct ammunition to this firearm, refer to the information printed on the ammunition box and the head stamp of the cartridge. This is a pump-action shotgun. It has a single barrel and a tubular magazine, allowing it to shoot several times between reloading. To prove a pump-action shotgun safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. With the safety on, while holding the action release located at the rear of the trigger guard, cycle the action several times to remove all ammunition. Observe the chamber to ensure no cartridges remain in it. Verify that the feeding path, including the tubular magazine, is clear. Use your finger to feel for the follower if necessary. Examine the bore. This particular shotgun has a cross bolt safety at the front of the trigger guard. Pushing the button exposes the safety off position. On this particular firearm, red indicates the shotgun is ready to fire. Pushing the safety button again places it in the safety on or black position. The data stamp identifies the correct name of the ammunition for this 12 gauge shotgun. This pump action shotgun accepts a 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch or 3 inch shell. Only the gauge number is shown on the head stamp. Sometimes the length is shown on the casing of the shell along with information on the size of shot pellets and pellet material. Remember, it is essential that only the ammunition that matches the data stamp be loaded into that firearm. Complete information is written on the box of shells and must be checked with every use. To match the correct ammunition to this firearm, refer to the information printed on the ammunition box and the head stamp and casing of the shell.
This is a semi-automatic action rifle. A semi-automatic action rifle or shotgun feeds another cartridge into the chamber from the magazine using energy created by the discharge. To prove this semi-automatic rifle safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. Ensure the safety is in the on position. Remove the ammunition by first removing the rifle's magazine. To do so, push the magazine release button to drop the magazine. Then, open the action by pulling the bolt carrier handle to the rear and holding it in this position. Press the lever at the front of the trigger guard. Release the bolt handle. The action should stay open. Observe the chamber to check that no ammunition remains in it. Verify that the feeding path is clear. Examine the bore visually or by using a cleaning rod with a tight-fitting patch or brush to ensure it is clear. Be sure when pushing the rod into the chamber not to hit the front of the bolt. Doing so could cause the action to close or damage the firing pin hole. The safety on this particular firearm is a cross bolt. A red mark indicates the rifle is ready to fire. Pushing the safety back places it in the safety on position. The data stamp on the barrel shows that the correct ammunition for this firearm is 22 caliber LR or long rifle cartridges. The name of the cartridge does not normally appear on the head stamp of this rim fire cartridge. So the information on the box of cartridges must be checked to ensure the correct ammunition is used. Although you may not be interested in using restricted firearms, it is important that you know how to prove them safe should you come upon them. This is a single action revolver. Revolvers have cylinders with chambers that can be loaded with additional ammunition, serving the same function as a magazine. In order to prove a single action revolver safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. Remove the ammunition by opening the loading gate. If the cylinder will not turn freely, pull the hammer back slowly until the cylinder can turn. The hammer should stay back. Raise the muzzle slightly and remove the ammunition, if necessary, using the ejector rod. Observe that all the chambers are empty. Verify that the feeding path is clear. Examine the bore by using a cleaning rod with a tight-fitting patch or brush. This is a double-action revolver. Like the single-action revolver, it has a revolving cylinder. In order to prove this double action revolver safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. Remove the ammunition by operating the cylinder release to allow the cylinder to swing out. Operate the ejector rod to eject the cartridges. Observe that the chambers are empty. Verify that the feeding path is clear. Examine the bore. This firearm is a single-action semi-automatic handgun. In a semi-automatic handgun, additional ammunition can be placed in the firearm's magazine. This is called charging the magazine. To prove this single-action semi-automatic handgun safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction, and if possible, with your particular firearm, ensure the safety is on. Remove the ammunition by operating the magazine release and dropping the magazine. Operate the slide to extract or eject any cartridge or casing from the chamber. Lock the action open. 
Observe the chamber to ensure it is empty. Verify that the feeding path is clear. Examine the bore. During our discussion of firearms, we have referred to the rules that apply to each and every firearm. The vital four acts. Let's review them now. Assume every firearm is loaded. Control the muzzle direction at all times. The trigger finger must be kept off the trigger and out of the trigger guard. See that the firearm is unloaded. Prove it safe. To unload a firearm and prove it safe, point the firearm in the safest available direction. Remove all cartridges. Observe the chamber. Verify the feeding path. Examine the bore. Point, remove, observe, verify, and examine. Essential steps to prove a firearm safe. Shooting at a firing range. Individual firing ranges may vary in rules and procedures, but all have a clearly designated firing line. Many have a ceasefire line. And all have a downrange area, which is where targets are positioned. The safest available muzzle direction from the firing line is toward the downrange area. Some ranges require that each person sign in upon arrival. Before entering a firing range, you must equip yourself with proper safety gear. Protection for your eyes and ears is an essential part of range safety. Glasses with side shields provide more security than those without. Check the status of the firing line and enter only when it is safe to do so. Whenever a range is in use, someone must be named as the range officer. Upon approval of the range officer, firearms may be brought onto the range and taken to the firing point on the firing line. At this range, a red flag means caution. The range is active. Check the rules of the range you use. Firearms may only be loaded at the firing line. Prepare the firing point and when ready, request that a ceasefire be called. In an emergency, anyone can call a ceasefire and must be obeyed by everyone at the range. The range officer will call a ceasefire. At the ceasefire command, all firing stops at once. Firearms are proved safe, actions are left open, and all firearms are laid on the mat or table immediately in front of each shooter. Their muzzles point in a safe direction downrange. Move back from the firing line and behind the ceasefire line. The range officer inspects each firearm to ensure that each action is open and that all ammunition has been removed. Once satisfied, the range officer will exchange the red flag with a green flag to indicate that the range is inactive. The range is clear, you may go forward. At this point, shooters may proceed downrange to change targets. A verbal command to this effect is provided by the range officer. Persons not engaged in changing targets downrange should be well behind the ceasefire line. During a ceasefire, firearms may not be handled under any circumstances. 
Some ranges have equipment that changes targets automatically. However, most require that you move down range to set up targets. When the downrange area is clear, the range officer will change to the red flag and call the range active. Only then may the firing line be approached and firing begin. The range is active. There are several safe stances from which one may shoot a firearm. The kneeling position is one example. Remember to check that the correct ammunition is being used. Safe storage of non-restricted firearms. Owning a firearm means being responsible for it at all times, including its storage. Procedures for safe home storage must be followed so that firearms and ammunition are always secure. It is encouraged that individuals exceed legal requirements when it comes to their own personal safety standards. These examples show types of home storage that meet safety requirements. Lockable storage areas such as this cabinet or this lockable closet are appropriate to help keep firearms safe and in some instances are required by law. A non-restricted firearm must be stored unloaded and must be prevented from firing by using one of the following methods. A secure locking device or the removal of the bolt or bolt carrier or the unloaded firearm is stored in a securely locked container receptacle or room that cannot be easily broken open or into lastly the firearm must not be within easy access to ammunition unless the ammunition is stored together with or separate from the firearm in a securely locked container or receptacle that cannot be easily broken open or into Remember, each time a firearm is handled, the vital four acts must be observed. Any time you transport a firearm or ammunition, you are responsible for understanding and complying with the laws and regulations in your part of the country. Specific restrictions and regulations may vary in different areas. For example, certain provinces or territories may require specific permits not required elsewhere in Canada. As a responsible owner and user of firearms and ammunition, you must ensure that you comply with all applicable laws and that you meet or exceed general safe practices. Display of non-restricted firearms. Every firearm on display in your home must be unloaded and cannot be displayed with or be within easy access to ammunition that can be discharged from that firearm. In addition, non-restricted firearms must be prevented from firing by using a secure locking device, such as a cable or trigger lock, or they can be displayed in a securely locked container, receptacle, or room that cannot be easily broken open or into. All displayed firearms must be kept secure. Transportation of non-restricted firearms. Always transport a firearm unloaded. During travel, store the firearms in a secure location preferably out of sight. Because this vehicle has a trunk, the unloaded firearm must be placed in the securely locked trunk if it is necessary to leave the vehicle unattended. Having personal standards that exceed the basic safety practices are the hallmark of a responsible firearm owner. This hunter is transporting a firearm in a vehicle without a trunk or similar compartment. 
If he leaves the vehicle unattended, he must place the unloaded firearm out of sight and securely lock the vehicle or the part of the vehicle that contains the non-restricted firearm. This is the minimum requirement of the law. Whether a person is returning from a firing range or hunting trip, it is important to remember the care that a firearm requires and that there are social responsibilities involved in using a firearm. Firearms require maintenance. Cleaning with the proper materials should be done on a regular basis. Part of your social responsibility as a firearm user is to realize that you are responsible for your firearm at all times. Always follow the vital four acts in the safe use of firearms. Assume every firearm is loaded. Control the muzzle direction at all times. The trigger finger must be kept off the trigger and out of the trigger guard. See that the firearm is unloaded. Prove it safe. The steps to prove the firearm unloaded are Point the firearm in the safest available direction. Remove all cartridges. Observe the chamber. Verify the feeding path. Examine the bore. This completes the program. Thank you for your attention. And remember, always aim for safety.